One of the best things we can do is start to think about the ecosystem being more personalized to allow you to use the tools that you need to make sense of the world around you and me and others to do that. We, we probably will need a central kind of learning management system, but how do we help students be more metacognitive and thinking about the tools that they use and how they're either helping or perhaps even obstructing their own learning. All of us probably have a young person in our lives that plays video games, right? In fact, we had a video game conference in Austin recently where they were talking about how they have stolen from learning theory because they realize as they design games, what they do is at levels of the game, you have to develop knowledge, skills, and ability at one level, have it assessed before you're allowed to go to the next level. Sounds a lot like what we do in the world of education. So part of what we need to think about is that kind of leveling theory and making sure that every student understands how they can level up next, right? If I'm here at, right now at this level, how do I go from this level to this level and make sure they have access? One, they're clear about what that level is, and two, they understand the resources that'll help them get there, and that it's not a mystery. A lot less lecture, a lot less, you know, just talking to the students. And also, in online learning, we are really looking to bring activity and to have it to have it go past the discussion boards because too many discussion boards, text-based only, and that's the only interaction that students have with the instructors and with each other. It has been uh, well researched that group learning and collaborative learning strategies can be implemented to not only allow students to be successful but also to engage them in that process that then leads to greater inquiry of ideas and concepts throughout a, a, the course. If we think of it purely in technology terms, I would say it's the LMS in a post-LMS world. A component-based architectural approach so that you populate your landscape with various apps and they hook together by using open standards. So I would say that the road ahead for technology, particularly in teaching and learning, is this notion of this next generation digital learning environment that is based on components, it's based on open standards, so that each school is beginning to define and and outfit its landscape in a way that really suits its needs and the needs of its students and learners. A culture that embraces change and innovation is what's going to be needed in higher education and I feel like some institutions are ahead of others um, and I don't mean just a particular technology change but just a change of process, a change of thinking, being open to perpetual change. We've got to do a better job of listening to students and their families and other stakeholders that may be involved with them in their educational journey. I think that uh, they have a lot, we have a lot to learn from them, they've got a lot to tell us, and I don't know that we have the mechanisms in place to hear that message very well. Or when we do hear it, if it doesn't meet our expectations of what we think they're going to tell us, we have a tendency to ignore that and go back to what we're comfortable with. If you had a medical condition right now and, and you went to seek medical help, the medical field tells you, you need to come in prepared, right? You have to become an informed consumer of that medical information. I think, I think the learner, long term, has to get to that mindset as well. Our students have to get to the mindset of being responsible for taking agency for their own learning and, and embrace that. If we, can, if we can get our learners to that part, that point, um, then I think we do, we're closer to having them prepared for that continuum of lifelong learning that we know they're gonna need. We know their careers are gonna change 10 times over their, of their, their life span. Um, the only way they're gonna be able to make those transitions if it, is if they have the core skill sets from career to career to find the information they need, engage with that, become an owner of that, in order to control and manage their own careers. Well, I would definitely say my passion always kind of lies with predictive analytics. And I think that's gonna be a really kind of key tool to help move student success forward. I think it really puts a lot of the right information in the hands of individuals, either faculty, advisors, administrators, and then you can really implement targeted interventions for students. So I think that's an opportunity that um, I, th I think will further us with uh, student success and any other tool. So I think one of the most important strategies when looking at student success is empathy. 
we certainly work with a lot of technology day to day, but I think if we lose connection with the human part of the equation, that can be very dangerous. We do a lot of work in technology that can be seen to supplant the human connection, when I think what we need to do is look at augmenting it. And I think uh, if we make a connection with the student, then we understand where they are and what assistance they need to become successful.